Let's say I'm practicing trumpet right here, and I'm using my iPad Pro with the Fourscore app for digital sheet music. Well, how do I turn the page if I'm using both hands to play my instrument? Well, as I'm playing, I can actually just turn and... Did you catch it? I'm literally turning the page by winking my eyes. What? It seems like everybody likes to hate on the iPad, especially its software. People will say it can't do what a Mac does, it should just run Mac OS, Stage Manager might be not what you expected. But I've actually found several use cases for the iPad specifically that no other device can do, not even my Mac Studio or MacBook Pro, which I love both of those devices and I use them for so much of my workflow. The iPad is just the best device for several use cases. I want to tell you about them now. So number one is digital sheet music. I've been using the Fourscore app for about 10 years now, whenever the first time it came out, that's how long I've been using it. I've used it when playing trumpet in an orchestra, when singing in a choir, and having an iPad for digital sheet music, it's simply the best experience for music. Rather than carrying around a bunch of binders and folders, I can annotate on the music, I can now turn my page with my face, which is ridiculous, I'll show you that in a second, and no other device, Apple, PC, or otherwise, can do this with the Fourscore app. My wife plays principal flute in an orchestra and she also uses her iPad Pro for digital sheet music. She'll get sent PDFs from the orchestra, she puts them on her iPad, she'll annotate them with the Apple Pencil. Sure, you can put PDFs on your Mac and maybe put this on a music stand that's kind of set horizontally, but if you're gonna be performing or singing and you need to put it on a music stand, that's a little precarious and it's not really gonna work. So this is the Fourscore app for iPad. Again, I've been using it since day one and they added some incredible new features. Not only can I annotate with the Apple Pencil, I can write, if I need to be loud or a crescendo, and then I can erase those annotations. But Fourscore also has incredible tools like a metronome. You can do an audible or visible metronome or both. You can create links in the music where when you tap on one place, it'll jump to another. So if I could say jump from here to another page in the music, let's say I need to jump to here, I can create that link. And now when I tap on the circle, it'll jump to that other page. There's even a piano I can bring up. If I need to like get a starting pitch or even play a chord, you can also create set lists here on Fourscore. This way you can put your music in order for whatever you're gonna be playing with. You can have access to your full library and there's even cloud storage services where you can pull PDFs from things like Music Notes or your cloud services like Dropbox. But the craziest thing here is now in the Fourscore Pro, there's something called face gestures. Here I can turn the pages of my sheet music with either a mouth movement, a head turn, or a wink. If you sing or play an instrument, sometimes the mouth movement and head turn won't work, but a wink is an incredibly useful way to turn the pages. There are like Bluetooth pedals you can buy as an accessory to use with Fourscore so you can turn the pages with your feet, but not having to buy an accessory and having the wink or mouth gesture built in, it's just an incredible feature, I love it. I've already showed you the wink, so let me go down to mouth movement. You can even adjust the sensitivity of the left and right mouth movement. You can choose backward navigation if you wanna be able to go back a page, or you can turn that off if you only wanna go forward, and you can also invert the controls. There's also this tool right here that will show you when it's registering a mouth movement here in the settings so you can make sure you fine tune it. Now I'm gonna try and do this so you can see, but I'm gonna look at the iPad and move my mouth. And you can see the pages are turning with that little movement with my mouth. Again, I can change it to a wink or even a head turn. Such an incredible tool to be able to turn the page of your digital sheet music with a wink or a mouth movement never actually having to touch the iPad. All right, use case number two. If you follow my channel for any amount of time, you know I edit a lot of podcasts every week. I have multiple weekly shows, video and audio, and I edit all of those on the iPad. The app Ferrite for iPad is the fastest way that I can edit podcasts using the Apple Pencil, and I've just not found a better experience for editing the audio version of my podcast than using the Ferrite app on iPad with the Apple Pencil. This is what Ferrite looks like on the iPad. I can pinch and zoom. When I want to delete a section, I can just drag it with the Apple Pencil. And then this command is so key. I can select Ripple Delete, which will close this gap for just that track. Or I can tap All Tracks, and it will move all the audio from across all the tracks to fill that gap. This allows me to so quickly delete certain ums or uhs or just sections of the show. And I can drag, delete, hit All Tracks, and it moves it over. Ferrite also has powerful audio plugins. You can do the EQ compressor, things like that, but it even uses Apple's new voice isolation plugin. So if there's some background noise or echo, that voice isolation tool is right here in Ferrite. You don't have to install any other application and it really helps cut down on the background noise. You can also add chapters to your audio show. You can type the text right here and you can add the custom chapter artwork all right here in Ferrite. So when you export this MP3, that chapter artwork is visible in your listener's podcast app. 
I have an entire video showing you my editing process with Ferrite on iPad. You can check that video out above or the link is in the description. Now I know you can edit podcasts in GarageBand and Logic and others prefer those applications, but when it comes down to speed, I can now edit at 2x speed here in Ferrite and it just allows me to do it as fast as I possibly can and I can edit multiple shows every week without a hitch. Even when I'm traveling, I've used a USB-C mic with the iPad Pro to record podcasts, whether it's in a hotel room or traveling. I'll have that audio right in Ferrite. I can edit it there, export it, publish it all from the iPad. So I have to admit, when it comes to podcast production on iPad, it is at a place right now where you can do the entire process from recording, editing, to publishing, all from the iPad device. Now, before we get to the third use case for the iPad that no other device can do, which is gonna be kind of boring and might be a little disappointing, I do wanna point out that there are some people who still use the iPad as their main computing device, even editing video. Fernando Silva is a friend of mine. He does all of his video editing in LumaFusion on iPad. He even has this entire setup with external displays and peripherals, and he uses the iPad for his main device. That's what he edits video and does all his work. And so there are some use cases that while you can do video editing in Final Cut on Mac, which is actually my preferred video editing method, there are ways where you can use the iPad Pro for video editing and production, audio production. There are some who use the iPad for like their full computer deal, video editing and everything else. Now I'm also not an artist, but there are many people who use the iPad Pro and Apple Pencil to create incredible artwork on that touchscreen device. They could probably do it in the physical world with like pencils or paint and canvas, things like that. But if they prefer it on the iPad, it's simply the best device for using a digital pencil input and then using applications like Procreate. Good friend of mine, Nate Baranowski, he's a 3D chalk artist, but he actually uses his iPad Pro with Apple Pencil, creating concept art and kind of building the draft sketches on his iPad. My final use case for the iPad is mocking up documents and filling out forms. I know that's a super boring use case. And I also know Preview on a Mac can do forms. You can type in text, even have your signatures auto-populate there. But when it comes to filling out a form, especially long forms that I just want to get done as fast as I can, or marking up things like house plans when we were constructing this house, using the iPad with the Apple Pencil, it was just the best experience for that. For example, here's the GoodNotes application. We actually had our house plans in here, and I was planning where to put the wireless access points. I was also planning where we needed electrical outlets, where I was going to put in-ceiling speakers in this family room, and just being able to circle, mark things up, and even draw shapes. The iPad is just the best device for that. And what's really nice is because GoodNotes syncs via iCloud to all my other Apple devices. When I was actually on site during the construction, I would take my iPad mini, which is much smaller than this big iPad Pro, and I was able to walk around with the mini. I can make more marks on the plans with the Apple Pencil because all I had to do to resync the Apple Pencil with the mini, just put it on the iPad. Now it's working with the mini, move it to the iPad Pro. Now it's working there. And it was just so convenient to bring that small iPad around, still use the same Apple Pencil and refer to those plans and mark them up. So can the iPad do everything a Mac can? No, it can't. Can't run Final Cut, although I wish it did because I would love to edit video on the iPad Pro in Final Cut. It's super powerful. This is the M2 model. You would think it should have the same abilities. And so while I still hope for some of those Pro apps to come to the iPad, there are some unique use cases that only the iPad can do. Digital sheet music, being able to edit podcasts with the Apple Pencil, which I just find to be the best experience and even marking up documents. I just find this is the best experience when I need to do that. But let me know in the comments. Maybe you're an artist, maybe you work in the medical field, and you have unique use cases for the iPad that I don't even know about yet. I would love to hear about it, maybe share your stories, maybe share a video clip of how you use the iPad. I'll also put a link in the video description to send me a video clip of unique ways that you use the iPad that no other device can do. I would love to do a compilation video showing all the unique ways of using an iPad that people don't even know about yet. Hit the like button and subscribe to the Bearded Teacher channel while you're here. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.